Hello, Smith Miller here from Shelley College. Um, <clears throat> we want to have a look today at the arms and the space races during the 1940s, 50s and 60s and try and explain why these were important to the development of the Cold War. Why did it make the Cold War much more serious? So, this all really starts off at the end of the Second World War um, and America had been developing a secret technology um, that is going to be incredibly powerful, so this atomic energy. Um, so they are the first country to uh, develop and harness this technology and they use it to end the Second World War. So they drop the atomic bombs, two bombs on Japan in August 1945. The crew of the Anula Gay drops the very first one ever on Hiroshima. So this new destructive power is realised. Stalin was an ally of, of the Americans, as, as we know, during the Second World War, but he wasn't informed about the atomic bomb about to be dropped, and he was very, very paranoid that the Americans, the capitalists, were going to use this technology basically to bully him into doing what they wanted. So he started his mad dash to try and develop his own atomic bomb, and he got scientists to work on it day and night until they'd built their own. So by 1949, the Russians had also developed their atomic technology, but were a little bit behind the Americans. This diagram I think is very good at, at sort of illustrating just how much more powerful and how quickly the arms race develops really with the technology. So we can see down here just where the cursor is, these are the first, this is obviously Hiroshima here, the first atomic bomb. And as the years go on you can see these new bombs, these H or hydrogen bombs, are incredibly powerful, or a thousand times more powerful than the original uh, atomic bombs and the Russians destroy the world's largest one, the Tsar Bomber. Um, so the technology is moving on very quickly and by 1953 both sides have sort of the, have got this technology. We can maybe see this in some of the facts and figures. Um, both sides are spending incredible amounts of money billions and billions of dollars on this technology because they, they feel that it's really, really important that they have got the edge, they can show that their technology and their weapons are the best in the world. The Americans develop uh, what's known as a U-2 spy plane um, and this was to take photographs of anything that the Russians were building so that it would fly incredibly high, um, nothing uh, at the time when it was first built was able to really see it, it was quick and very very difficult to spot. So they flew across the Soviet Union and took photographs um, back to America to check what the Russians were up to, which clearly the Russians were very unhappy about. Khrushchev, who we know takes over in 1953, called for peaceful coexistence. So he reckoned that they could try and come to some sort of deal between them to try and solve this and stop spending so much money on on arms race. Um, both sides had, had developed their own alliance systems which perhaps contributed as well to the, uh, the arms race. NATO was set up by the Americans and led by them after uh, the Berlin airlift which we've looked at and the Russians developed the Warsaw Pact so their countries were part of this Warsaw Pact. So both afraid of each other, both trying to use their uh, allies to protect them from each other. The arms race got a little bit more serious when um, the de was the development of the ICBM, so the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Um, both sides developed these. Um, the Russians actually developed them first. Uh, and the Americans soon afterwards. Americans launched them from submarines, like the Polaris missile, or they could be launched from a bunker as well. So we've got the diagram here that maybe just illustrates the danger really, that you could launch an atomic weapon, an H-bomb, and it could land on a target within half an hour. So you could be dead before you even got home. You might not even have any warning. So it was quite terrifying, these weapons were very scary, um, 
And obviously, if you've got allies in Europe, you can put them quite close to your enemy. So the Americans put them in West Germany, in Turkey, and in Italy, where they could much quicker hit the Soviet Union. The Russians sort of hit back um, by developing the space race. Uh, their first thing was Sputnik, which was the world's first satellite that was launched in 1957. Um, quite primitive by modern methods, but pretty sort of forward-thinking revolutionary in 1957. Um, and the Americans very concerned about the fact that the Russians are the first to get these items, these satellites, into orbit around the Earth. Um, to add even more concern for the Americans, the Russians had the first man in space, Yuri Gagarin, go into space in 1961, and they had the first woman in space as well, Tera Shikova um, is the world's first woman in space because the Russians and the communists liked to sort of show this idea of equality. Both men and women could do the same jobs, they were equal. So President Kennedy, when he came in in the 1960s, spent an enormous amount of money on NASA, the American Space Agency. Um, he wanted to make sure that America got back in the lead because they'd fallen behind the Russians and he made a personal promise that the Americans would have the first man on the moon and they spent billions and billions of dollars developing the technology to send men to the moon. Um, the nuclear bases, um, this sort of links in with the uh, alliance systems. We have obviously the Warsaw Pact here, we have NATO um, forces um, around as well. So if you had allies you could put missile bases in their countries and it would give you perhaps an advantage over your enemy. You can probably see here by the diagram that the Americans definitely had an advantage. The Russians had very few places outside of the satellite states where they could put their weapons. So it was very difficult for them. By the 1960s, people started talking about nuclear weapons being mad, the mad theory that there was so many of them, the arms race had developed so much that it was going to destroy the world like this here, going to crack this world in half. And actually, if you launched one, it was going to just end up killing all your people as well. So mutually assured destruction, mad theory, it was going to end up with everyone going off the cliff. Um, the Americans placed missiles in Turkey, which is here, uh, obviously Russia's here. And this was a, maybe not the best thing to do because the Russians felt very threatened by the fact that there was even more missiles pointed very close to their land. And you can probably see by the diagram here, um, <clears throat> in particular these medium range missiles. The Soviet Union had a lot of these, um, but they had nowhere to put them. They had no allies close to America. So they had to think of a way to get these medium-range missiles, which they had lots of, closer to America. So they hit upon Cuba, uh, which we'll look at in another session, um, and they try and place missiles in Cuba, which is only a few miles, you can see there, from America, from Florida. So this leads to the Cuban Missile Crisis between Khrushchev and between President Kennedy, where they are uh, nearly get close to it, uh, nuclear war with each other over the issue of should Cuba be able to have Soviet missiles inside it. Okay, so that's probably all you need to know um, about the arms race and the space race. They're quite closely linked together. Um, obviously the arms race comes first, um, but that develops after Sputnik into probably more importantly a space race, um, trying to show that you've got the best technology and your country is superior in all these different aspects of life. Um, so if a question comes up on that, you should be able to give quite a few examples now about the arms race as well as the space race and the fact that it made relationships much, much tenser between the two superpowers and it leads to nearly a nuclear war in 1962 between the two alliance systems, NATO and the Warsaw Pact. Okay, that's all for now. Hope you found it useful and we'll speak to you again soon.